Hi guys, this is Beef Miniatures Warhammer Tactic Series and today we'll talk about my top 3 Grey Knights Brotherhoods. First thing that I would like to point out before we start talking about my top 3 is that every Brotherhood has its uses. Some are just more versatile or strong and strong than others. So if you like some Brotherhood or you have some special idea of a list that uses it well, you should definitely try it. None of them are just so good that you won't be using anything else, which is a very good thing in my opinion, and it indicates that Games Workshop is really trying to balance all the books and all the rules inside them. As you all probably know, all the Brotherhoods give us three things, basically. They give us a world trait, a stratagem, and a psychic power each. And the psychic power is known by every unit in your Brotherhood except the Honored Knights. The same goes for the stratagem and the world trait. Obviously, you can't use the them on the Honored Knight units, but you can use them on basically anything else in your detachment. I've decided that to be included in this top three, a Brotherhood has to have at least three uh, good things in it, three good traits, or two excellent ones. I think it goes without saying that the Brotherhood is only as good as the list that uses it, so if you have a very very poorly written list, and you try to use it with a strong brotherhood, you probably perform worse than a well-written list with a weaker brotherhood, but one that is tailored to it. And without further ado, let's start, and the first brotherhood will be the sword bearers, as you may have anticipated already. It couples nicely with the uprise of the Nemesis Dread Knights, because it gives the most buffs to the vehicles in the brotherhood. You basically get a very good psychic power, a good stratagem, and a situational warlord trait. Let's start with a stratagem. It's a simple and effective one. It costs 2 CP, which is a downside because Grey Knights already struggle so much with the CPs. But anyways, it lets you tag a unit within 12 of your Psyker unit, your Brotherhood Psyker unit, and all Grey Knights Brotherhood units that target this unit until the end of the shooting phase get plus 1 to hit against it. It's a simple and effective buff. Yes, the 2 CPs is something that many Grey Knights players would very much appreciate to keep in their pocket, but 3 Nemesis Dread Knights hitting on 2s is something that's probably worth the 2 CPs. Range is probably the single most restrictive thing about this strategy, because very often what you need to kill is in your opponent's backline and separated from you with a thick layer of screen. As far as I understand, there is no way in Grey Knights Codex to increase the range of the stratagem, because it's not a psychic power and it's not an aura. So, yeah, a good stratagem, but you have to use it in the right moment, and you have to have a special target that would justify spending two command points on it. The strat goes nicely with the psychic power, which is probably the best thing in this Brotherhood. It allows you to get plus one to wound for your ranged attacks of your vehicle units against the chosen target within 18 inches. It's Warp Charge 7, so pretty hard to cast. I would recommend putting on some model with two casts, like Drago or Buffin Librarian, with Empiric Amplification and this power, Empiric Lodestone, and try to activate the Psychic Challenge strat as soon as possible to minimize the risk of miscast. Unfortunately, this Psychic power is not one from the Dominus Discipline, so the Gem of Enoch 2 that is very popular on a Buffin Librarian right now won't work on this Psychic power. Strongest thing about the psychic power is that it makes your Gatling Silence or wound anything in the game, at least on 4s. And your Heavy Psychons will wound in anything on 3s and 2s, which is a very reliable source of firepower. And even though you can combine this buff with Empyrean Complification, obviously, most targets it will probably be a complete and utter overkill. So instead I would recommend to use this as an alternative buff for something that you won't be charging this turn, but instead need to kill in the shooting phase, because you can't reach it with your charging melee units. Now about the Warlord trait. Most of your useful vehicle units in the Codex already have a 4 plus invulnerable save, so this only is effective on your Flyers, your Land Raiders, your Rhinos, and your Dreadnoughts. Whether or not something like this is useful for you is heavily dependent on what type of list you are trying to make. If you plan to use a Land Raider that is filled to the brim with Paladins and you need your Sanctuary elsewhere, it's a great option for you, especially if you give it to your Tech Marine with the Etheric Conduit Relic that effectively makes him the Master of the Forge, allowing you to restore 3 wounds to any vehicle in each of your movement phases. So, as I said, a situational world trade, but not a bad one. Now, Rapiers. Yeah, these are the guys that you're gonna call if you need some demon faces really smashed in. They are all about melee, melee, nothing but melee. 
Their stratagem is a great one. It costs one CP no matter how big is the unit that you are using it on. Which is again great for Grey Knights that struggle with the command points. It gives you exploding sixes in melee which is awesome on your big 10 man unit of strike marines or terminators. It's so so sad that you can't use it on paladins unfortunately but you can use it on a 10 man strike marine squad with the support of a brotherhood ancient which is going to have the same amount of attacks which is crazy I think. That's obviously before using the stratagem. Exploding the sixes to hit is the same as having plus one to hit on a unit with three plus weapon skill. And we all know how awesome it is to hit on twos, rerolling ones. But wait, it gets better because they have one of the best psychic powers in the whole codex, which allows you to give your unit plus one attack until your next psychic phase. So one unit of 10 strike marines from rapiers can dish out five attacks each with exploding sixes to hit. It's 51 attacks before the sixes. So if you have Dragon nearby, you are gonna be rerolling all those ones and twos, allowing you to gain more sixes to hit, <laughs> giving you more hits. And you can use it on multiple units with Tide of Escalation, which in turn makes your humble five-man strike marine something that can really hurt practically anything in the game, especially if you spend one CP on mental focus and give them Hammerhand. But I want to be honest with you, even though the rapiers and sword bearers are indubitably strong, the most universal and somewhat of a hidden gem of the book are the prescient brethren. Because the, firstly, their warlord trait solves one of the biggest weaknesses of the whole Codex of Grey Knights, which is their complete and utter command point starvation. This trait allows your character to perform a psychic action which gains you a command point. First, it may not sound like much, but it actually bumps your CP gain in the game, your maximum CP gain, from 5 command points to 10. This is a warp charge 6 psychic action, so it's relatively easy to cast. Usually you're gonna be farming around 4 command points with it each game, which is not a bad start to compensate for how expensive are the stratagems of Grey Knights tend to spend command points in more phases than our opponent because we spend command points in the psychic phase and it's our psychic phase and then our opponent's psychic phase if we need to reroll the deny or maybe spend one command point for 3d6 deny. So that's the great stuff about the warlord trait. Now about the stratagem. It costs one command point no matter what unit you are using it on and you can use it on characters and on your basic strike marines terminators and stuff like that. And it gives your unit reroll once to wound and reroll once to hit. Plus, you can use the stratagem in your shooting phase and then use it again in your fight phase. So, for example, if you have a five man unit of strike marines that you've gated to free up your opponent's home objective, using the stratagem on them will bump up their efficiency by a mile. On average, a five man strike squad will kill with halberds, will kill four and a half uh, primaris marines on the charge and six and a half using the stratagem. And the most important thing that the stratagem will give you is reliability. Because if you really need that objective secured by your units, there is nothing worse than uh, having to see your unit roll like 10 ones to hit and then a couple of ones to wound and you've killed like one or two marines and then they kill a bunch of your guys back. Another great target for the stratagem is your Grandmaster and Nemesis Dread Knight. As a character, Grandmaster doesn't get rerolls, only from Drago maybe, and probably it's wiser to use those rerolls from Drago on, uh, for example, a 10-man Strike Marine squad near. That's why a stratagem like that is immensely powerful on this Nemesis Dread Knight, especially if you use it in shooting and then in combat. That's again the great thing about this Brotherhood, is that you're gonna actually have the command points to spend on stratagem like that because of those additional four or five that you're gonna gain throughout the game. And the last but definitely not least with the pressing brethren is the fatal precognition psychic power. It's a targetable warp charge 5 offensive psychic power that allows you to basically curse an enemy unit so that each time they move, fall back, advance or charge, they suffer d3 mortal wounds on a roll of 4 plus or 3 mortal wounds on a roll of 6 plus. And it has a range of 12 inches and the target does not have to be visible, which is great. At first I thought that this psychic power is not that great, like D3 mortal wounds on roll 4 plus, it sounds like worse than smite. But then I thought that it may be very convenient to cast this, for example, on a small character that is heavily screened or maybe heavily armored with a good and vulnerable save and minus one damage or something like that. 
for example, like Biologus Putrefire in a big squad of uh, Blight Lord Terminator. They don't really want to charge this guy and you basically can't shoot at him. So the only way to target him would be with the targetable psychic power, like that one. So having one of your Strike Marine squads that is free uh, cast this on a character is a good thing because in a couple of turns this character might really die, especially if this is a melee character that which as well as moving also needs to charge and that will trigger a further 4 plus so that may cause d3 more to wounds to it. Also here in the text I also mentioned that uh, this psychic power is useful against the targets that limit amount of wounds that you can deal to them in the face, but Grey Knights are obviously not the army that struggles with dealing uh, like 3 wounds in the psychic shooting and uh, fight phases, but the good thing is that you will also be able to deal wounds in the movement and charge phases, which is almost unprecedented in Warhammer. So if you're going up against a couple of Kitans or a couple of Bloodthirsters that uh, can only have 8 wounds dealt to them in a single phase, this might be useful for you. So if you're going to be using 4 Nemesis Dread Knights and trying to shoot your opponent off the board, the Sword Bearers are definitely for you. And if you're going to be using a Land Raider filled with Paladins, that's also the Brotherhood you're going to choose probably all the time. However, if your biggest goal in the Warhammer universe is to kill some demons, kill them utterly, kill them with no mercy and kill them as fast as you can, the best brotherhood for you is probably the Rapiers because they can have crazy buffs to their melee, uh, buffs that you can't probably find anywhere else in the book. And last but definitely not least are my favorite uh, President Brethren, which are the sort of universal brotherhood that buffs your melee, your shooting, buffs your overall reliability and uh, your defensive capabilities because with them you're gonna actually have some command points to use the three command point transhuman a couple of times in the game so they are your jack of all trades master of none kind of brotherhood i hope this video was useful for you and i'll see you next time